Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. Today we're going to be talking about formula manipulation. When we're working through formulas, we use algebraic operations to solve for the unknown. And we generally solve for the unknown before plugging in the numbers. And the reason for that is it just makes calculations simpler. It's much easier to plug in all your numbers after you've manipulated your formula than to um, try to put the numbers into the formula and solve it. Now here's an example of what I'm talking about. Here we have a word problem. A drag racer accelerates from rest at 5.7 meters per second squared. The final velocity is 37 meters per second. Find the time. So from this word problem, we have to take out the information that we, we need. Uh, sometimes it's a little hard to figure out what it is, but we do know a few things here. We know that our final velocity is 37 meters per second, so we can write that down. Velocity final equals 37 meters per second. And velocity final is also sometimes called V. So you have to know your formula, pretty much. Here is our formula, V equals VO plus AT. This is our final velocity. So that's one piece of information. The other piece of information we have here, clearly, is that the drag racer accelerates from rest at 5.7 meters per second squared. So our acceleration is 5.7 meters per second squared. So we can write that one down. Acceleration is 5.7 meters per second squared. The other thing that's not so apparent is that the initial velocity is zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Our initial velocity is zero. We're saying here the drag racer accelerates from rest. So initial velocity, if it's at rest, is zero. So we know then that VO equals zero. <coughs> Now the last piece of information we're looking for is what are we trying to solve for and we're trying to find time. So time is our question mark. What are we looking for? So we use this formula. It has all the pieces we need. It has velocity, it has acceleration, and it has initial velocity, plus it has what we're looking for. It has time. So we're going to use this formula to try to figure out this question. So we start with this and we again are solving for time. We subtract our velocity, subtract our velocity from this side. And I'm just working through this quite quickly. Don't worry about the formula manipulation because we'll be doing that later. This cancels and we have V minus V VO equals AT and then we divide by acceleration divide by acceleration and we're left with V minus V initial divided by acceleration equals time and at this point we just plug in our numbers we know that our velocity is 37 meters per second we know that VO is 0 we know our acceleration, 5.7 meters per second squared. We plug in those numbers and it will give us time. I'm not going to work through the calculation. Just showing you here that when you set it up this way, it's much simpler. We just, at this point, plug in our numbers into our calculator and we'll get our answer for time. So let's work through some of these questions. Here we have delta t, which means change in time, equals t2 minus t1. t2 is usually the second, did I say time? Change in temperature equals temperature, the second temperature minus temperature initial. So if we're trying to solve for our final temperature and we know our change in temperature and our initial temperature, what we would do is we'll start with our formula. And in this point we're trying to solve for T2 
so we need to move the minus t out of the equation. So what we're going to do is add t1 to both sides. And if you're not familiar with uh, solving equations, go back to your uh, videos on solving equations. So we're going to have delta t plus t1 equals, these two of course are going to cancel, equals t2. At that point we've solved for t2 and we can plug in the numbers that we have for delta t and t1. Now let's say we're trying to solve, same formula, we're trying to solve for t1. Here you can see that t1 is a negative. I want it to be a positive because I want my equation to look like t1 equals something. I don't want it to be negative t1 equals something. So what I'm going to do is move the t1 or make it, make it a positive. So I'm going to add t1 to the right side. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other, so I'm adding t1 here. So I'm left with delta t plus t1 equals, these two cancel, equals t2. Now it looks like I haven't really done much here because I still haven't solved for t1. It's important to remember that sometimes these calculations take two or three steps. So again, I'm looking to find t1. I want it to be by itself. Right now it's added to delta t. It's important to remember that in front of delta t there's a positive sign. So I need to move my delta t out. <coughs> I'm going to subtract delta t from the left side and I'll subtract delta t from the right side. These two cancel. I'm left with t1 equals t2 minus delta t. And at this point, again, we'll plug in the information for that. Now here we have our formula for voltage, current, and resistance. And we're going to solve for resistance. What's happening between current and resistance is they're being multiplied. So if you remember from the uh, videos on solving equations, when you have multiplication, you divide. So we want R by itself. I'm going to divide by I and I divide by I on the left side. The two I's cancel and I'm left with E over I equals R. There's my equation solved and now I can just plug in voltage and current and I'll be solving for R. Here's a question that's a little more complicated. We're solving for D and you can see here that D is squared. I'm just going to walk through it one step at a time. The first thing I usually do is deal with the thing that seems the most troublesome. Right here, the division by 4 seems to be the biggest problem, so I'm going to get this 4 moved out. So what I do on the right side is I multiply by 4, so these two will cancel. And what I do on the right side, I must do on the left, so I'm going to multiply by 4 here. These two are gone, and I'm left with... 4a equals pi d squared. Now again, I'm solving for d. d squared is multiplied by pi. Not going to worry right now about the fact that d is squared. I just want to move pi out of there. So these two are multiplied, so I will divide by pi. What I do on the right, I do on the left. So I divide by pi on the left. These two cancel take this up here, and I'm left with 4a divided by pi equals d squared. Now, d is squared, and if you remember your um, information on exponents, in order to get rid of the square, I square root. I square root on the right side. What I do on the right side, I must do on the left. So I square root the left square. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I square root the left side. When I square root d squared, I'm left with d. And on the right side, I have the square root of 4a over pi. Notice that I don't 
worried myself too much about whether the D is on the right side or the left side. It doesn't really matter. What I'm doing is solving for my D. Once it's solved, I can rewrite it if I want as D equals the square root of 4A divided by pi. All I do is put them on the opposite side from one another. Our final uh, formula that we're working for, through, n equals mg minus f sine of theta. This is actually normal force equals mass times gravity minus the force times the sine of theta. And we are solving for our force. I am going to leave the force on the right hand side and solve for it that way. So at this point I have mg minus force sine theta. What I want to do is move the mg over to the left side. I know that there's a positive sign in front of mg so I'm going to subtract mg from the right side. I also then subtract mg from the left side. I'm, I'm left with n minus mg, and on the right side these two cancel, and I'm left with minus, don't forget your minus sign here, minus f sine of theta. Now at this point there's a couple of ways we could deal with this. Notice we have minus f sine of theta, and we don't want to be left with minus f equals. I don't want to have an answer of minus f equals whatever. Okay, I want to get rid of that minus. So I'm just going to rewrite this as n minus mg equals minus 1 times f times sine of theta. And it's important to remember when you have a minus in front of anything, it's really just minus 1 times that thing. So now we essentially have minus 1 times f times the sine of theta. Three things multiplied together. So what I'm going to do then on this side is divide by minus 1 times the sine of theta. Minus 1 will cancel and our sine of thetas will cancel. On the left side, I divide by the same thing. Minus 1 times the sine of theta. Here my minus 1's cancel, my sine of thetas cancel, and on the right side I'm left with f. On the left side I have n minus mg over minus the sine of theta. Now normally the minus is not left in the denominator. Normally it's written either up here or we could actually change these two and it become n, mg minus n. But at this point let's just simplify it and we'll say minus n minus mg divided by the sine of theta. Notice that the minus sign is out in front and that equals f. And there we've solved that final equation and all at this point all you do is keep your minus sign out front, plug in your numbers and there you've solved for force. And that's a wise guy's presentation. Have a good day.